Good morning, Paul Georgi from Allendale. It's August 19th, 2010. Well, the big news this morning is the USDA uh, export sales numbers. They came out here at 7.30 this morning. Uh, wheat, they were looking for 800 to 1.3 million tons. Came in at 1.41, so a little bit friendly there. Uh, soybeans, 1.2 to 2.5, a huge range. We came in within that range at 2.23 million tons sold. Uh, that would be considered neutral compared to the number. But the corn is where the surprise came in. They were looking for 1.2 to 2.3 million tons sold. Total corn sales this last week is 2.889 million metric tons. So big sales there. But after this is said, you got to remember that we're trading. That's past. That's the reason why this market rallied because of all the demand that we had uh, a week ago. So uh, new uh, events here today. What are we going to look at? Outside markets, dollar down 12, crude down 26, stock markets down about 20, and the gold is up about 3 to $4 as we speak. Uh, weather, uh, not much change there. The looks like at the end of the two-week period, we should start to see some more rain moving into the Corn Belt, into the lower areas of the, the Midwest where we need rain right now. The question there, is that going to be early enough to save some of these uh, double crop soybeans? I know talking to producers, they're having uh, some very big concerns about the double crop beans uh, right now. They are dry. Uh, there is a lot of lighter soils down in that uh, uh, southern uh, Illinois, Indiana area that uh, need rain more readily in order to uh, to get this production going and that's that's a big concern so we're uh, we're going to be monitoring that very closely but the uh, other news that's uh, circulating here overnight uh, talk in our uh, report in a Russian paper that uh, they may have to import up to 5 million metric tons of grain this year uh, they normally import about 1.5. So that uh, story's got the wheat market hyped up here. Wheat up uh, 20 cents here overnight plus. Uh, also, Japan buys 129,000 tons of wheat. Uh, Egypt buys one cargo of wheat. And so we've got some, uh, some demand going there, some uh, reason that uh, we could see some, uh, some more volatility here this morning in the, uh, in the wheat market. We've been uh, somewhat oversold. The, the trade has been selling wheat and buying corn. May see uh, some reversal of that here today. The uh, other news uh, as far as corn and soybeans go, it's mostly technical in nature. We've got uh, Dees corn uh, up against resistance at 438 uh, here this morning. Uh, well, it's 435 or so here in the futures, but 438 is a critical number that we need to get through. If we break through that, I'm sure we'll have uh, some heavy stop activation. Uh, soybeans 1050 is a big number there on the upside 1011 on the downside if we break out of that range uh, I would suspect just based on technicals and the uh, the winding tide of this uh, uh, this coil that we could uh, spring sharply in the direction of the breakout we're uh, so attitude here today uh, for traders you may want to look at selling it up against resistance but uh, be prepared to get out and uh, manage your risk if uh, markets go through those levels. The uh, livestock markets where the action was overnight. We had uh, cash cattle yesterday afternoon late uh, trade at uh, 95, 96, 97 and then uh, late uh, had a customer call us here last night around 10:30, uh, saying that uh, he's bid uh, $99 for some cattle. So this uh, this has got the, the futures market excited. We've seen sharp rallies there overnight as much as uh, $2 higher in some cases. That uh, excitement uh, certainly is carried over into the livestock complex. We've got cattle, feeder cattle, hogs all higher here in the uh, electronic session. Uh, we did uh, close above those resistance areas that I've been talking about here the last few days in the cattle and the hogs. If we broke through that, we'd probably get some more buying. We did uh, sharp rallies yesterday, follow through today. Is that an indication of what could happen in the grains? Uh, certainly is possible, so you got to be aware of, of those kind of uh, 
uh, moves if uh, just based on the uh, the technical action. But uh, cutout values were up yesterday in the cattle, uh, 125 higher in choice, uh, 90 higher in the select. Uh, it looks like the uh, the futures contracts are now headed to the $100 area uh, before they find uh, much resistance in the uh, the cattle complex. And the hogs, uh, we had sharp rallies there yesterday. Uh, cash markets are steady to higher here this morning, maybe even a dollar higher. Uh, Russia also clears another 10 uh, production uh, facilities here in the U.S. for poultry shipment to uh, Russia. So that's a, a good sign and certainly supported to the, the hog prices. We've got uh, cutout values up 57 cents and uh, technical resistance right now is up around 79.10 and then again at $80 in that uh, October contract uh, with the most uh, significant support down around that 75.90 in the uh, October. So those are things to watch. Also another uh, thing that I wanted to point out in the uh, October contract, the hogs, you take a look at a chart there, we've got an island bottom which is uh, very significant as long as we hold that level and uh, 7590 is uh, going to be a key number in that uh, determination. So uh, a lot of things going on, a lot of excitement here this morning. Keep in touch with Allendale Research. We'd be happy to help you and answer any questions you might have. Don't forget to fill out that yield survey on our website or give us a call. We'd appreciate it and uh, help us get those numbers exactly right. So we need your help. We wish you a very successful trading day. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Thank you.